my generation to love God, to seek Him, and to be revealers of His possibilities. This is my inspiration to my generation. I hope that one day, a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love God, to seek Him, and not just to stop there, that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with God. Are we together now? And so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt, a contribution, you can call it, to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know God, but we understand his ways. It's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this, but let me tell you sincerely, I love and I care about every one of you from the depth of my heart. It, it shouldn't be me saying it, but I say it because it's the truth. It matters to me that your knowledge of God is rich. It matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life. It matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of God on earth, in as much as the Bible has revealed to us, is systemic. Are we together? God is the God of systems. When you encounter his person, then he grants you the ability to understand his ways, his methodology, his systems. The results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly. Are we together? So on one hand, we are coming into the knowledge of God, intimacy here and there, but then we must understand his ways. Listen, let me tell you this. Our destinies, the quality of our destinies on earth, not only depend on the love of God for us, but our ability to understand his ways of doing things. Are we together now? To be able to replicate his reality in our environment. That's the whole idea of kingdom come. It's not a mystery. It's to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression. In every area. Every area. Remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently. The Bible says Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says according as. Verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you. You know through the knowledge of him. Of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon 
a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with God and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says there are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve God because of the things that he gives us. We serve him because of who he is and our love for him. But he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him, you encounter other things. The ability to attend to the matters of life. Because in doing so, you demonstrate that he is a good father. Number two, in doing so, you demonstrate dominion. Number three, in doing so, it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of Satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve God do you know why many of the people we call God's generals were powerful they gave God time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with God that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say Satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for God there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this burden called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire
entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches sundays churches are full with members wednesday activity i'm talking of seeking the lord not as a profession for a man of god where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock i thought you should be earning a living and you say he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming i'm sorry to say it and i i love our parents we have many of our elderly people here i love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about god we had godliness in a religious way every time there was bible study something happened a sound in the zinc 
demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me and my house say as for me and my house I will serve the Lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord I've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and I look at them my first concern is will your home serve the Lord will your life serve the Lord let me tell you there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and Satan makes sure a stipend comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers something is wrong go listen to me I came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow I build myself that's the truth you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment but there is a determination that superimposes those things for the sake of my generation i will present jesus Are we blessed the things that pertain unto life and godliness there are some of us and it really grieves my heart as young as we are condition as we call it has taken away our focus from God there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home God is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody 
who is now employed who now teaches that child if, if, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day he will be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of benihim today imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call but they were hijacked and they only see the visions in their parlor god shows them global events and they are there no grace and influence to effect it You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes men of God hold prayer meetings. Is it not those who have eaten that will come? If I hold a prayer meeting five days in a week, Pastor Alpha, you're a lecturer. Except God grants you grace, should you can't be effective. You are only effective when you have options. And that's what Satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel 
and make our children feel sorry for being Christians. You look at many of us here, you are looking at me now. Look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere. Now you are in church, you are jumping. But once you are there, are you drinking? No, I don't drink. Are you this? No, you and they look at you, oh, what a child. This guy, his eyes have no... And you feel so guilty for loving God and being attention and paying attention to him. It's like the in thing now is rebellion. You are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn, lawless, rebellious, and proud. That's what we are marketed to a generation. That is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning. If you must be a superhero, be rebellious. Be a bully. Be everything but a Christian. The average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home, no way. Satan, there is no entrance. Huh? That gentleman who was talking about Aleko or whatever it is, look at now. That a time will come, your child will be saying, Mommy, we are from Benue, but what is that? You say, I settled it already. Don't worry. It was well settled. That, that discussion, just one day I will tell you about the story. That once upon a time in our village, people don't reach 30. But I stood as an altar and I settled it. Are we together? And one of the deceptions, let me begin to build my discussion tonight now. One of the deceptions that I think God is granting me grace to connect tonight is what I call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of God Everybody say the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is a definition of all his intention. Everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of God for that dispensation. And one of the things that you see Satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie Let's examine a few things before I talk about imbalance. I shared one time about three great errors that the Lord revealed to me in the body of Christ. If you remember, when we were talking about the body of Christ, let me do a quick recap. That the Lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of Christ. The first error is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said, the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're examining the first error now. Giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils. Everyone say the doctrine of devils. Another word for this is apostasy. Apostasy, a deviation from God's known pattern of operation. Apostasy. The first error that the body of Christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy. Listen to my message, the apostate church. 
apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from god's pattern two things there a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointing no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an arm robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism 
when God begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and God can preserve Kenneth Copeland because it is the body. I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God and not say, after all, they don't listen. Say, no, no, Lord. This, whatever it is, he's part of the body. His integrity is our integrity as the body. And Lord, arise in your mercy for your namesake. But we keep becoming individualistic. You ask believers, what is your pride? Our pride, let me tell you the pride of our generation. Three things. One, revelation, rema. The extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth. And nothing is wrong with that, right? Greek words, Hebrew words, play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries. We love that. Two, prophecy. If I give you a prophetic word, which is not bad. Three, anointing. And our definition of anointing is fall down, not result. Fall down. Just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something. And so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit. We're looking for revelation. We're looking for an ability to communicate, which is, 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 is to be desired. And then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting, people just fall up and down. And when these things happen, we believe that we are fine. And we don't extend the scope of our alliance to God to extend beyond our personal comfort to think body. In terms of administration, you know, I love Koinonia. Thank God this is where he's planted me. But in terms of the health of the church, I am passionately concerned about the body of Christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that I teach um, I have taught this already so is what I call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very carefully you see please come Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see Jimin, one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing at least last week you saw it praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a 
well somewhere a man of god was talking about those he was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the Pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that. And all of them may have some sense of justification. But the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another. Just waiting for a legitimate excuse. Are we together now? Yeah. Whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one said, what is the meaning of warfare? The other one said, keep waiting. Demons are coming. See, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Listen very carefully. Listen carefully. If we do not trust God to rise up and correct these imbalances, we are going to authorize Satan to destroy us. God's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth. If God gives me an assignment and says, apostle, through you, 
the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just we say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services you say yes he say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received this breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here
I want you to listen to me very carefully. Why am I teaching you this? Because God is helping us to be a blessing to many others. Are we together? In balance. There are many people in the body of Christ whose ministries have been strangled. No room to find expression. Simply because the man of God who founded the church, the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with God. And so because of that, the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding, you fight it, you abuse it, you can call it of the devil, you blackmail it. Amazing. Do you know why God limits you like this? So that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body, you see how complete the body is. You see that? So if God has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry, and I don't walk, say, in miracles. And Sam, come Sam. Sam walks in the miraculous. It is my identifying with Sam. It now supplies a dimension of God that I wouldn't have seen. Are we together? Now, for Sam, the way God dealt with him, it was just vision and power. So when Sam comes to the stage, he says, Look, stop all this grammar of Bible study. Let's go straight to wheelchairs. He is also in error. He does not know. It's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses. They want power immediately. So chances are that you will see that in Sam's church, you receive miracles, but there's no spiritual growth. Because the system, he just, the, it was the God, almighty God. That was the revelation that was given to him. For you, the rabbi of rabbis, that's what you got. So you can sit down and teach one series for one year. And then I reject you. I say, Sam, all it takes is mental transformation, not power. People need to be leaders. And then Sam is saying, continue there. You are watching your members crying. What they need is power. Both of them, God is with them. But they believe God is not with each other. You see that mistake? please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse the bible was not open straight to power and he say you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effort to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of God. Turn to Philippians, you see them just snoring. Once you hear, so, ah, 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 you see, that's right, this is, I mean, we are, we are in church now. That's all people want. And while that shout is going on, the business guy says, when you finish, go and pay your rent. Shout, roll on the floor, your rent is, the, the tribute collectors are there. And you can't say, he's not godly because he's rich. And it's with part of the money your church was built. So the pastor can't shout at him. You know what it will mean to you. 
Look at the confusion. Now, let me tell you, no one of these three will admit they are incomplete. It is one of the hardest things for men of God to do. To admit that regardless of what they have seen, they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body. It is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of Christ was seen. The seven lampstands. I heard a voice when I turned. I didn't see Christ. I saw the complete church with all the dimensions. When I saw the complete church, I saw the fullness of Christ. If I had seen two of them, I would see only his hands and think God is a hand. Then I see another church and see his eyes and think all to God is prophecy. Then I see another church and I see his legs and I think all in life is progress. But the complete church revealed the complete Christ. Is God speaking to us? This is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination. And so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say, look, all those power guys, don't mind them. All those revelation guys, the Bible says money answer it. That's the members answering him now. All things. Whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer, a millionaire, that money cannot do anything about. Are we together now? answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that no power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of God. The hand does not see. It only holds what the eyes see. Listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now. Some of us are in ministry. Some of us are leaders. And already, we are, if we are not careful, we are, get, we are getting into big error. We've been mentored by all kinds of people. That's why I see as a man of God, if God gives you any influence over people, go and pray and say, Lord, let me not raise a people. That will be defiant from your patterns. I say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry. But by his grace, Koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries. As a person, we have account numbers of many ministries that I'm not even connected to. They are not my friends. We could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say, look, we have to do something. The other day, I think Dunamis came and they were opening their branch. Here. Our protocol department, all of them, they said, no, let's go and serve. I said, quickly, make sure that anything that is needed, let it be given. My koinonia, I am apostle, I'm the owner of Zaria. God gave it to me, it's my property. No. This is why men of God don't sleep. This is why men of God yoke members with covenant. Swear that you will stay, why will I swear? why you change clothes why why shouldn't i change? i mean I, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him I said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm whosoever keeps his life shall 
lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of Christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way God calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from god where god can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of god to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for god for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet i am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself 
because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head you said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well i was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what i need now is what you carry there is no man of god that comes to my life that i cannot receive anything from no that's why i see some of our fathers i don't sit down and say oh revelation revelation there are places i travel to minister i already know that they may not have that level of word content but when it's time to pray i'm humble please reveal it to me many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later out kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of god is diminishing it will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous but you don't have a heart for god by the grace of god i want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life when they come to passion for god you are there prayer you are there not because i have all but i know how to bring all i travel somewhere and i see a man of god ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adamawa state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I make if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you 
but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town i'm, I'm a man of god already who is this pastor the, of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult Mel Mel mensa otabel and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. You die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Iya deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that Joshua Selman will never see, even if I fast for 400 days. It will not be covered by a demon. It will be covered by God himself. 
so that I will need a Jimmy to see it. There is something a Jimmy will never see until he looks at a Pastor Toby or a pastor here in Adamawa. There was something about God I learned when I went to Adamawa, sir. I, I say it. I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that. Women, some of them old enough to be my mother. And you see, I'll say it. Till today, when I go to Mubi, they see me, they start jumping, Daddy, Oyoyo. Oh, people with doctors, lecturers, with such depth of humility. I don't know if I can do that for anybody. And while they do those things, I don't sit down with my pride and say, Wow, you mean they acknowledge me this far? I sit down and say, Lord, let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before I now die in the next 10 years because of pride. Do you see that God has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it? Imbalance is a destroyer. There are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces. It's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire. Oh, I prophesy, your name is divine. Ah, man of God. And so, yeah, oh, these riffraffs, divine. Whereas one day he tried to, he said, What's your name? Are you Gabriel? He said, No, I'm a Jimmy. And he said, Ah, he said, No. He, he wanted it secretly. He was just too hot. And then he said, No, what is not all about prophesying? You must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah, how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man I know in Abuja. I don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him. One day, maybe when we are doing something in Koinonia, and he honors me a lot, I'm sure I'll bring him one day to pray. That man can go for um, no food, no water, not that you drink water in the night. Dry. Ah! If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa. Before, I, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection. The kind of power that is in that man's voice. Yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, stand up, oh. You better stand up and lay hands on me. How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it. The moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you. Oh, a beautiful song. Look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing. I was just listening to his speech. I said, would dash monkey banana? Let me try that thing. I was in a Belkuta, my voice ceased just because it was raining. Yes, someone shouting. <laughs> Are we together? Now, don't forget, for those of you who know a little about me, I was once a music director. I'm not naive musically, but now I carry my pride and try what he's doing, and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose. To respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an iPad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important 
it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that I, i'm not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is pride just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something i'm a man of god too but there's there's this the vision is hazy i'm not seeing very well what is there does it mean you are not born again a hazy vision is something that happens to everybody jesus touched people many times are we together you must reject imbalance the imbalance that comes in approaching the body the imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what god has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something i've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have Pray. you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny Hinn. i need to get some more from kenneth copeland i need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people dr luca and dr john sent me a text and they said apostle we are coming over and i said oh dear i love you when i was told i was told that since around 4 a.m or so this is the assistant chaplain he's also a man of god himself but he came here since around four to sit down what is there about a man the veil has been torn and it tears and you do you don't enter the veil has been torn you are still poor the veil has been torn you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC I go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little I honor them and I get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me I won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if I were their age, I don't know if I would submit to a small boy like this. So Lord, help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me. Where we don't have anything yet, we make a lot of noise. Lord, deliver me from it. So that I can look at one of these, our little ones tomorrow and say, Apostle, I saw myself laying hands on you and I said, do it. The girl is shaking. I said, I said, do it. And she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation 
you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember i prayed for that woman i have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition i couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me i encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start i said lord how can a man be this helpless i came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures i was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of god is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the bible say in my name i did it it didn't work that meant i need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the bible was saying because it's clear i did not get what jesus was saying are we together and yet i watched benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song 40 wheelchairs 40 brothers and sisters this thing is not magic if you don't have it find it because it is there if it is not in your life it is not missing it only requires the humility to search you desire the prophetic and it's not in your life it is available it will take your humility to search man of God I have prayed but I know God has directed me but I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia and the moment you are talking the Lord just tells the person Lafia and he says the Lord is sending you to Lafia in one minute the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia just when you round up the fast you hear a choir bomb and as soon as you round up the fast you hear just you see that whatever is a limitation to you we are going to pray please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can't be benny Hinn and kenneth copeland and joyce mayer and td jakes and bishop oyedepo and papa Ia Deboe at the same time with the same degree no sir i have to be one of them but i can enjoy what is on bishop oyedepo papa adeboye benny Hinn. i can enjoy it through the humility of participations the word koinonia sharing together the ability to extend your hand through humility 
to say sir i have seen the dimension of god's grace in your life and i'm open to let it work in my life and honor becomes the key to that access and all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace people have prayed for me in my life i have been a product of many people's prayers i have been surprised at how powerful the body of christ is i have prayed for people and sometimes i look at what they call a mountain and i am shocked because i know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes i wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only working in koinonia brothers and sisters god is working across zaria god is working across the north god is working across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much Are we blessed we are going to pray father my my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher he said prosperity preachers are rubbish now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house although a preacher of the gospel lord my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing close your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me 
for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why i am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of god from my life if i opened up myself to the healing ministry i would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced his healing. I rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life. Lord, I ask for mercy. I've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me and let me return back to the word. I've been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of god all i look for now is power lord have mercy take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings lord have ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power, without grace. So my church, my business, my family has no genuine anointing. Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence there are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but i observe the body of christ and i see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so and people don't pray you know why because in a bid to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment people don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the god of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of god let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension i will pray in please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need 
Lord, balance my life. Lord, balance my life. Balance my church. Balance my business. Balance my understanding. Balance my life. Balance my life. Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of seeing Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria because no other region can accept you. You have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture. You travel to another person's culture, they jail you as a man of God because you do not understand the terms. There are other ministries that the revelation God is giving them should go to the whole earth. But your resentment for wealth has kept you poor. And so nobody can hear your voice. No tapes, no books, no nothing. Because prosperity that will give it wings is not there. I can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring. Because I see prayer warriors who the... The oldest person there may be 60 years. No car, no house, no school fees. The moment they are driving children from school fees, it's all, it's all the prayer warriors' children that return back home because they have ignored it. Now, let me tell you something about imbalance. Your imbalance makes you represent, misrepresent God to your territory because they are depending. Unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about God. Make sure you give them a balanced perception. Don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell. But they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles. They destroy their homes. Half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry, there is no teaching priest. There is power, but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together. Are we together? Or you can have a crowd of people who never pray. The prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour. Because that dimension has been ignored. We're going to pray one last prayer. Balance my life. Balance my life. Lift your voice and cry. Balance my life. Lord, I receive leadership. Lord, I receive prayer. Lord, I, see, I receive wisdom through the word. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive excellence. Lord, I receive the warfare dimension. I receive the prophetic. I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God. Regardless of the limitations, I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia. I receive the dimension that brings speed, I receive. The dimension that brings establishment, I receive. 
the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I have not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost I thought it was just something for Pentecostals but right now I open my spirit to receive it's a dimension needed in my life in your name we will rise I don't know you reign in your name we will rise I don't know you reign hallelujah let me add one more prayer Lord put a dimension of love for the body in me love love when there is no love criticism will remain when there is no love sarcasm and resentment will remain open your mouth and cry love for the body love for every church love for every man of god regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will I resent any man of God no longer will I resent any church no longer will I resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate but it still is not enough reason even if you are not part of them wish them well even if you are not part of that church wish them well even if you are not part of that prayer group wish them well even if you are not part of that christian organization wish them well you are not part of the mission agents wish them well talk well about them talk well about their leaders hallelujah let me pray a prayer for you from the depth of my heart I want to pray for you listen I have gotten more results in my life from loving the body than from praying believe me I have gotten more results in my life just from loving the body than I have from my prayer life there are things I have not prayed for the love for the body brought it to me there are dimensions that my love I love the body of Christ there is no way I've not ministered and there is no way I will not minister there is no way I will see a man of God and have to turn and leave him and say oh you are from this no I have many friends today great people we don't believe many things we don't agree in many things yet it is still too small a reason you don't have to agree with people to love them you must agree to work together but you can disagree and still love them you believe in tongues i don't believe in tongues no problem you pray your tongues we can't work together but i can love you you believe in finances i don't believe in finance no problem i sit with my broke life after all lazarus and abraham they all went to heaven so you can sit the way you want and shortchange yourself you believe in finance you don't believe in prayer okay fine i i can but this hatred do you believe in finance no go do you believe in prayer i know do you believe in wearing trousers no go do you believe in tying your hair no go do you believe in praying shouting no don't do that don't do that don't ever be part of that nonsense you will think it's a good thing until you watch yourself destroy yourself are we together listen when you come to my house i have a modus operandi I have a system in my own house because it is my house but when I go to your house even if I see what is not permissible in my house in your house I must sustain a system of accommodation there is a way we do service here in Koinonia 
you don't accept someone is under the anointing you don't see somebody just run and come and fall down here he may kneel down may lie down there but you don't find that there are churches you go to that during praise and worship the man of god is jumping another member outside will come and be jumping with the man of god and they are sweating don't just see that and say god forbid what is going on here be careful in the midst of the lampstand christ is still there are we together you don't come and then you see a woman just because she's not wearing earrings she's standing and see all these people we have moved past this level and you just say who is this woman humble yourself and sit down and say lord let this woman speak to me you don't come and just because you see a woman maybe not covering her hair or whatever preserve your perspective as revealed to you by god but you must give allowance for the diversity of the body there are things i believe it will never change no matter where i go to there are convictions are we together but i'm able to open up myself and when i go to certain regions i make sure that i go through the sacrifice of aligning to their understanding there are places i cannot fly a shirt like this to go and minister not because it is wrong the context of their understanding will not allow them to receive of the grace of god upon my life there are even some that i cannot even wear suit because once your suit is excessively clean and flashy that in itself may not even suggest that you are serious spiritually so i can decide to just wear something that is plain even traditionals i may not even wear something with many colors is the sacrifice so that there will be minimal distraction so they can receive it's called love for the body when you love the body there is no sacrifice that is too great if you are going to a church and they say to enter this church cover your head no i won't do this god no. carry your wrapper cover your head and enter and see jesus and let jesus minister to you and you go back when you do this you will see how your life will begin to grow because when the prophetess is coming and she's on trousers, i don't say oh this is no what are you saying when the woman is coming and she doesn't have any earring when the man is coming and all of a sudden you see him looking poor and wretched you don't say all oh, this poor man what do you have to tell me when we do this then the lapses in our lives will be closed and we will see a new church that is rising complete perfected by the diversities of the body therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace to receive the multifaceted dimensions of God released through the body I release it upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you that the grace to be and remain unresentful towards the body unresentful towards any and every church receive that grace I cast away from your life the spirit of cynicism and criticism based on differences that you do not appreciate i command that spirit to live your life forever i plant in you the fortitude to accommodate dimensions that are inconveniencing to you in the name of jesus christ the grace to overlook the weaknesses and the limitations in the body so as to receive the grace upon her receive it in jesus name the grace to sacrifice your convenience so as to find a dimension of christ resident within certain inconveniencing spheres i release that grace upon you now in the name of jesus christ every dimension of god that should be working in your life and is deficient in the name of jesus christ i pray that by the mercy of god may he navigate that dimension back to your life in the name of jesus christ i pray for the spirit of humility that the pride that makes you see or think that any other person who is not you is not needed in your spiritual growth process i take away that pride forever in the name of jesus christ let me teach you something about commanding results among the many factors that are responsible please listen among the many factors that are responsible for producing results you need a very strong sense 
of desire and determination. No one ever succeeds becoming passive, careless, and um, less as fair about life. There is a level of passion and commitment you must communicate whether it is the pursuit of spiritual things your finances your life ministry business whatever it is success will always find expression in an environment where passion desire you know lots of believers want great things they want to step into deep dimensions of intimacy with the holy spirit Many people want to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. They want very superior dimensions of the spirit manifested in their lives. But largely, our, the communication of our desire and our determination, the staying power, the capacity to remain until that dimension is unfolded in your life. I think that that is where many of us believers need to make a lot of adjustments. We are generally very passive very very passive and very quite careless over the communication of our determination for spiritual things and you see the thing about god is it takes a level of desire god loves everybody he does not trust everybody trust is based on a track record a track record of hunger a track record of a, a predeterminate desire in your heart Many of us have come here tonight. I came, I saw people outside, you know, some lying flat, trusting God for a miracle. Probably they were carried here, you know, and all of that. There must be a desire. You may not have the power in yourself to lift yourself up from the wheelchair or from the crutch or whatever it is, but you must communicate that passion. I love the people who led the prayers. They kept adjusting our faith to understand that look it will take a hunger and a desire the moment you have options then forget about encounters are we together you have to insist tonight and say lord i'm not walking out of here barren i'm not walking out of here sick i'm not walking out of here with the same level of confusion I'm not walking out of here bankrupt of that dimension of the anointing. I came with an exact desire, an exact intention. And whenever you insist, you provoke the hand of God. This is very true. Psalm 30. Look at 37. I think it should be 37. It just came to my spirit. I'm searching for that scripture now. Yeah. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the what? the desires of thy heart it is possible for God to come to a man and not be able to communicate anything because there is no desire are we together now now you see God is almighty his possibilities are endless it takes the construction that our faith builds to channel the dimension of him that we seek to see revealed in our lives are we together now if you're not barren, there is no need God coming to reveal himself as one who can open up your womb. You're not barren. That dimension of him is possible, but it is not needed as far as your desires are concerned. So it is the responsibility of the believer to intentionally use your faith to create an exact expectation. Lord, I am trusting that you will visit me. I am crippled. I am trusting that this leg will work. Lord, there are all kinds of oppression in my life. All doors have been closed. I'm trusting that the doors be open. You cannot say, Lord, just come, do whatever you want to do. That's not a very wise prayer. You have to define. He said, give us this day. He didn't just say what we want. Give us this day our daily bread. He can give many things. He sent quails. He sent bread. He brought water out of the rock. There are several things he can do. You define the possibilities of God that should be communicated to you through your faith. But much more than just blind faith through specificity. Specificity of desire. Specificity of um, intention. Are we together now? So I just thought that it is very important. In fact, this is a general principle that works in life. Not just when it comes to receiving from God. You will never achieve anything when there is no exact desire. 
you will never achieve anything when there is no specificity there has to be that dimension of exactness lord i am trusting you for a move of the spirit in my life i'm trusting you that my ministry will step into another dimension i'm trusting you that my family will step into another dimension end the plague of sickness and all kinds of things when you connect this way then it becomes impossible for you to walk without a miracle hallelujah praise the lord let me encourage our hearts this morning before we rise up john 14 verse 12 i am a firm believer in the bible the words of jesus are no story to me when i read them i believe them they are not just scripture they are life i believe them exactly as they are written jesus is teaching here and this is what he says verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me whoever believes on me he says the works that i do he shall also do and greater works than this shall he do because i go to the father jesus now there are all kinds of theological debates as to what exactly jesus was talking about um, many people meant a higher dimension of reality other people talk of greater results regardless of what dimension you look at it jesus was saying there is a possibility of walking in a dimension that you were not born with listen carefully a dimension that is god's own class of results are we together now he's teaching us how to live a life that is invincible and this is what he says he says that greater dimensions that you have seen manifest you will walk in and you see every time god speaks before he utters a word he vets and probes himself whether he has the capacity to make good that word every time he speaks it is a communication of a a resolve he has searched and he has found out that what he's saying is within his capacity to produce it there are several people in need of the touch of God people talk about anointing all the time they want to step into deeper dimensions they want to tap into the wave of revival that is sweeping across cities and by the way I want you to know that there is a mighty move of God that is happening across the continent of Africa specifically Nigeria um, away with all those blind talks that people talk as if nothing is happening it takes the eye of the spirit to see the formation there is a mighty mighty move of the spirit an awakening that is sweeping across and what a joy it is to participate in contributing our quota to that 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 unstoppable tsunami that will sweep across the nations of the earth though the word of god is full of prophecies that points to those seasons that a time will come in the dealings of God with men where they will be able to tap into higher dimensions of his possibility. They will be able to cause his glory to be revealed across territories in measures and dimensions that have not been previously known. So I want you to believe up front that we are a people who believe all of God and we are a people who have aligned ourselves to allowing God find full expression there is no limit to the dimension of God that can be revealed. Every time God looks limited, the limitation is not his capacity. It is our inability to understand his system and to align enough to bring down, to be able to host all the multifaceted possibilities that are contained in him. Are we together now? And tonight there are several cases. Right from home I began to see several situations that touched my heart and i said lord you can't let your people go that way and the lord put something in my heart that i just want to share with us very briefly and then we'll pray i have a passion and a commitment to helping people have an encounter a true encounter not just a noise making encounter an encounter with a definite result that you will leave and it will be very clear that heaven found expression in your life heaven found expression in your situation heaven found expression that your life will be an epistle to let people know that jesus is not limited in any way if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah first john chapter 5 and verse 4 
Apostle John taught us something very remarkable. First John chapter 5 and then verse 4. And he said, For whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever is born of God has capacity to overcome the world. Are we together now? That's the expression there. Whatever is born of God has capacity to overcome the world. But then he says that that overcoming is engaged through a system. The dear lady who led prayer here taught us about spiritual intelligence. Are we together? Every time you see possibilities in scripture, now there are two dimensions I've taught you of accessing the reality of scripture. There is the prophetic dimension. Realities as far as God's dimension is concerned. But there is the experience of it where it becomes manifest in your life on the strength of your engaging the required mysteries that demonstrate your partnership with God to actualize it. Are we together now? So here the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. The rendition there is has capacity enshrined in it is the composition to overcome this system and all the limitations that come with it. And then he says, and this is the victory in other words this is the system wherewith the victory was designed to find expression he says even our faith even our faith even our faith it takes faith in this kingdom to be able to produce realities that have been represented in scripture realities that are capable of being our testimony the fact that the bible records them does not mean they will happen automatically i think this is one of the biggest challenges with the body of christ i don't think we are unaware of the provisions that are guaranteed from scripture but the systems everybody say systems say it one more time systems the systems of the kingdom that were built around those possibilities the inability to access what system was designed to produce what outcome will make us continue to look at scripture and believe they are there but never walk in the experience of it it is god's desire not only that we read the bible and see possibilities written therein but that our lives become epistles that those realities that are represented in the bible must find expression in my life and your life when the bible says that a believer should walk in miracles signs and wonders we can read it we can write books about it but there is it's an entirely different thing to engage the systems required to bring that individual into an experience of it are we together the bible says for instance they shall lay hands on the sick many people have tried it they laid hands on the sick and the sick were not healed every time you try a thing and it does not work there is something you do not understand about what you study that's why it takes the spirit of revelation ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 the prayer of paul to the church you don't have to turn there he cried they were born again they were believers but he knew that they needed to be assisted by a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit otherwise they would never enter into the experience of the kingdom Nicodemus came to Jesus by night chapter 3 of John and he says verse 1 rabbi he says we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things and then he said unto him in verse 3 he says verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again listen carefully he says he cannot see the kingdom then the next verse Nicodemus says how can, how can a man be born for a second time can he enter back into his mother's womb and then verse 5 he opens up, up to another dimension he says verily verily I say unto you except a man listen be born of what water and the spirit then he says he cannot enter so he talks of seeing the kingdom an awareness of the possibilities that are there you know that there is a provision in the dealings of god with men 
for the sick to be healed there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where men are immune from the ability of sicknesses to touch them there is a provision where we are lifted above the grip of 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 demons and devils but it's one thing to have that awareness listen believers but it's another thing to understand the systems and the mysteries that were attached to be able to cause us to walk in the experience of that outcome so we we hold several scriptures that we cannot defend with our lives there is a possibility for restoration but what is the key that is attached i am passionate about revealing to believers the mysteries that are responsible for causing spiritual realities to become their experience just like shortly we are going to be celebrating the victory miracles upon miracles but the issue is not just an anointed man the issue is that underlying these miracles and testimonies and the manifestations of the grace and the power of god are vessels that have aligned themselves through understanding you see most of us um the theology about faith listen carefully the theology about faith that is being communicated as powerful as it is may limit us from walking in the experience of the power the grace and the revelation of all that is contained in God faith is not just believing unseen things um, they don't have to be unseen faith it's not just believing on seeing things so that they will manifest that's a dimension of it but faith listen true bible faith the foundation for true bible faith starts with an encounter an encounter without an encounter you will not have true bible faith an encounter is not a vision an encounter is an experience that is initiated by the holy spirit that causes a spiritual truth a reality the reality of a scripture to be crystallized in your heart the end of an encounter is conviction the end of an encounter is conviction You'll never be able to walk in a dimension where you are guessing and hoping and wondering. No, sir. Encounters are necessary for believers. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to us. The spirit of truth. Are we together now? So he introduces encounters in our lives. You can read the bible and quote a scripture it doesn't mean you've had an encounter with that scripture you may even learn it and know it of heart sincerely speaking it has not been released in your heart but when the holy ghost breathes upon it it does something to you and that scripture comes alive it's called an encounter occasionally it may be backed up by visionary experiences to strengthen your conviction but the end of encounters is that you get to a point of persuasion, unbending resolve, persuasion about the possibility of God as far as that matter is concerned. Are we blessed? Second Timothy, please, chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's look at Second Timothy 1 verse 12, the B part. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. The B part says, for I know whom I have believed. Everybody say, I know whom I have believed. Now, you went to school, understand that construction. It didn't say, I have believed. Uh -uh. I know whom. So it's talking about a person first. I had an encounter and that encounter caused me to believe that person and everything that proceeds from him. Are we together now? And then he says, and I am persuaded that he that person i've had an encounter with is able 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 an understanding of a man's ability an understanding of god's ability i have had an encounter with him i have had an encounter with his word so when i read and he says they shall lay hands on the sick it's not just story it's not just religion this is the foundation of true bible faith so there are no options in it again you know that it is within his power to change my situation 
you don't say well lord i will try you let me hope that you will work today if you don't work no 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 there is a level a level of resilience you see the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions the depth of your encounter determines the strength of your convictions it's obvious from the way we live and act as believers that there is a void there is a lapse in conviction and this is a product of um, the haze that is around our encounters with the word of God not the reading of it not the memory of it but that there is a gap it is obvious if I look at this gentleman right now and I tell you do you know you are sitting on the ground he's not going to pray about it he knows he's sitting on a seat are we together he's had an encounter with that seat his his even his physical senses have have responded to that reality he knows he's sitting no matter how i try to sway him he has entered a dimension of resolve he knows he's sitting on a seat if i tell him this seat is going to break he says no not just that i, I have seen the dimensions i understand the strength of this seat it can take my weight listen God allows you to vet him and probe him until you find him worth your trust. God does not get angry when you ask him questions that lead to your faith being strengthened. Uh -uh. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel took out time to explain. This is how it will happen. Gideon said, Lord, you are sending me to go and fight the Midianites. I need to stand with conviction. I know those guys. They are fierce. And so is it okay if I ask for a sign? It is powerful to stay with God until you are convinced. I know that there are people here, pastors who have come from several places. Let me challenge you. Do not make boastful statements until they come from the strength of an encounter. It will destroy your life you will destroy your ministry you will lack explanations you will schedule a season of untold suspicion in your life i always say never stand before pharaoh until you have seen the burning bush say encounters bible faith starts with encounters encounters produce convictions convictions now allow you to act and take steps it is that step that is called faith hello believing is not faith believing is part of the process that leads to faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word that's faith until action is taken there is no faith are we together now i've always given this example um let me use you john hold on i'm going to stand there stand there just stand there i'm going to call john i want you to answer me but don't come is that all right john come say i'm coming has he come so as far as i'm concerned you have not obeyed me because this should be the reward for your obedience now you have answered that you are coming but you have not come i interpret your not coming as a sign that you you are expressing concern about my reliability you are wondering if I really have this. But if I say, John, come and you come. Come. That step of faith puts pressure on my integrity. If I am joking, I better found a way of correcting it. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, listen. The Bible says that one time they were going at the hour of prayer. And then the Bible says that they saw a man who was crippled. Now, they were not stupid. That man was crippled. If you've seen a crippled man, you know that there are no strength in his limbs. Even if he stands, you know that he would take the grace of God. And then the Bible says that he was calling on them to give him arms. And then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, I give unto you. He says, in the name of Jesus, I come under an authority. I represent a government and I invoke the power that backs that government. And I ask you, if you believe, stand. The Bible says the man was still looking at them. Now, I hope you know the Holy Ghost was already hovering with all his possibilities. But at the mercy of a man who has not manifested faith. 
And then the Bible says Peter had to help him. Hold my hands. The Bible says Peter held his hands and he leaping, leaping. The power is released at the point of action. It is the action that makes it faith. Not the determination to act. The determination to act helps you to eventually manifest faith. But the faith is only when action is taken. He leaping stood. He leaping stood. He would have remained there forever. He leaping stood. Are we together now? Yes. So when, when, when you hear the word of God, you see this is why the dispensing of the word of God is so important. Because faith is based on a basis. And the basis is not good word. The basis is not good intention. A nice positive statement cannot give you faith. It does not have the capacity to release that. God is only committed to backing what is his word. Are we together now? If it is not consistent with his character and it is not his word, there is no platform. You may act, but you are not acting upon the word. You are acting upon an information. So the word of God comes. And then you hear that word. Listen, like you are hearing right now. And you believe. And the Holy Ghost helps your unbelief. He supplies to you that grace and that enablement. Number one, to consider that God is able. It is within his power to create scenarios around your mind and your spirit that strengthens your conviction. He can remind you. And say lest you doubt have you forgotten that january this year something was about to happen and all of these anchors together to build your faith because a response will be needed shortly from you and that response must be on its on the standpoint of conviction everybody say conviction how do you look at someone who is barring and tell the person go it takes a while for pregnancy to show and that woman believes it's not when she meets with her husband that she gets pregnant no the husband only gives the word manifestation right and she leaves or you're seeing someone like some of you are sick now and then when it's time to say be healed all of a sudden how do you explain someone having a lump or a growth or a cancer and at the speed a fraction of a second is gone brothers and sisters that's what faith does i want you to believe this the bible says this is the victory this is the system where we believers command victory as an experience by engaging their encounters produce persuasion lord you are not a joker lord you believe i i believe you your word is true your word is real you are you are not trying to flatter me you gave jesus christ that would not be a joke on the cross and on the strength of that, Lord, I am willing to act. Listen. The final step is action, but not blind action. It has to be the action required by God. This is where we miss it again. Are we together? Confession is a generic action. That it is the manifestation of the spirit of faith. The Bible says we having the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe and therefore I speak. So we believe and therefore we speak. Are we together? Speaking is a generic action. But there are many possibilities we want to produce in our lives. That require actions that must be added in addition to speaking. For instance... The action that is required for your heavens to be open is that you bring before the Lord your tithe. Are we together now? No matter how much you confess your heavens opening, you must take that action. And if you take that action not believing, you just dropped money. You drop 10% of an amount. It's not a charm. The power is released through understanding. I am coming because I have an understanding. I have a comprehension of what I am doing. And Lord, I thank you because you are my high priest standing in heaven. Hebrews 7 and verse 8, the Bible says, Here on earth men gave tithes, but in heaven he received them. Talking about the system with which God performs that function of his office that is in the order of Melchizedek. 
right like he received the tithe of abraham and spoke a blessing upon abraham so he our melchizedek our high priest receives that tithe and authorizes that the heavens be open and that the blessing is activated on our lives but that will never happen just by dropping money it's not about the money there is an understanding so your tithing is the specific action that is tied to that open heavens are we together now you pray and fast it is spiritual but it will not replace the action wherewith that result was tied to so it is important that we have understanding to know what action has been defined by God's wisdom that is tied to the outcome we desire are we together one time Jesus prayed for someone who was blind and the Bible says in this case he spat on the ground and then made sputum out of it and put it in his eyes and said go wash at the pool called Siloam that is sent now that was the action if that man turned and started praising God and danced there for one day he would never be open he would, the eyes would not be open he was taking action but the action was not the one required are we together now Mary understood this and said whatever he tells you to do do not whatever you think he wants to be done so it is important that you find out what is the system of this partnership as far as this is concerned i want multiplication i want increase is it a possibility in god yes it is now i believe it but what is the system tied what does god require that a man do as a symbol of his partnership with him to actualize that dimension of reality we must find out so when we search scripture we are not just trying to know we are finding our place of partnership in scripture when you find it then you rejoice because you have found the key to committing god this that action is what we call faith and the bible says it is the victory that overcomes hmm. the victory that overcomes so what is the key to your healing the bible says they came to hear and to be healed there is no healing when the word does not come for that and when the word of god comes the power of god is present to heal and then the word comes but when the word comes it does not heal you automatically the word comes and somewhere along the line it produces conviction after conviction the word will compel obedience either through an instruction or whatever it is there are conditions for reception when you come for a meeting like this there is a condition to receive number one is to believe in the lord number two is to believe the vessel he will use believing the lord alone will not give you a miracle no sir it will always come from god through men to you are we together Jesus went to certain cities and the Bible says he could not do mighty works. That was not the limitation of his power. It was not the limitation of his spirit. But the inaccurate understanding of the people to create an alignment that can afford him to move in the dimension that they desire. Tonight, listen, ladies and gentlemen, God did not gather us here to waste our time. It is within his power to change our lives. It is within his power to wipe our tears. Are we together now seated here tonight are people who truly truly require all kinds of miracles there are people here to resuscitate their spiritual life it's like it's like it's like a man in icu a lot has gone haywire the prayer life spiritual life and you're trusting god that there be a true encounter that refires your love for god you must understand the object of your desire and you must understand the system that helps you achieve that miracle there are people here tonight in response to delay and stagnation nothing seems to work nothing it is a bit comforting if other doors open and others are closed it will inspire you to trust that others but it's a terrible thing when all doors in your life close family closed finances closed your body everything closed there are people here because of an acute state of limitation 
invisible barriers around your life limitation is not retardation limitation is that a a mark has been created that you cannot cross so you rise and you get to a certain place and there is something that pegs you at that level and you never rise i watch it all the time pastors leaders business people individuals helplessly limited sincere but they are limited tonight the god i serve will take that limit away there are people here with sicknesses diseases infirmities real sicknesses probably with death sentences from different medical hospitals and um maybe they've told you you have a few months to live you have a few weeks to live now and of course we have a lot of doctors here i respect their opinion that's their opinion is their educated opinion but tonight whose report will you believe I believe in Jesus. I believe in his words. There are people here with all kinds of marital and family issues. Husband is about to go. Wife is about to go. Children are haywire and they are trusting Lord would you give us order. Of course it is within his power to bring sanity and order i mentioned these things to build your faith to help you know that your situation is within the scope of god's understanding and he can deal with it because sometimes we stay so long in the decadence of our situations that we wonder if god is aware that such a thing can happen to men let me tell you the god we serve is all knowing all knowing and it is within his power to solve that problem tonight there are people here with all kinds of barrenness all kinds biological barrenness and all sorts of unfruitfulness in different areas probably trusting god for children and all of that i came back from abuja um in the course of the week and um when i went there i was i was counseling a few people and then i saw a young lady i think a, a couple or so i can't remember exactly and they were excited the last time i was there the woman the lady had been they'd been trusting god for a child all kinds of funny medical reports you know she had something in her womb her tubes i don't know what what they gave all kinds of stories and there she had given birth you know to a very bouncing healthy uh, child and she was telling me the news and laughing listen be careful what you believe it is within your power to choose what you believe nothing forces itself on you you can choose this is a wonderful thing this is a fact but i choose to reject it it's a choice anything that is not consistent with the counsel of god it is within your power to choose to reject it are we together there are people here under all kinds of academic and career challenges no job no lifting all kinds of strange occurrences that are not consistent with God's desire how about demonic patterns mysterious occurrences in the lives of people patterns that you cannot account for God wants to step in there are people here and I believe this probably affects a lot of people especially with the recession the reality of lack and poverty lord what is the way out lord what is the way out i can't keep struggling from hand to mouth we've shared extensively there are all kinds of teachings about the economic system of the kingdom and i would plead that you get those teachings they are free because when it comes to prosperity the gospel has to be taught there is an understanding that must be built in your mind now god can give you breakthrough as a communication of his might and mercy but you are never established financially through breakthrough it will take an understanding to build a system that lifts you out of the realm and the grip of poverty forever say amen, amen. there are people here trusting god for direction you have come confused not knowing what to do you thought you had god but right now you are in the middle of total confusion and god must speak for you i want to welcome you because in his presence there is direction 
And finally, all of these are lists that the Spirit of God was just writing out for me as I, I mean, just stating out as I, I, I wrote them out. And lastly, there are people here trusting God for very strong impartations. What is an impartation? A transference of possibilities. Transference of possibilities. Impartation is as real as the chair you're sitting on. You can transfer possibilities. Possibilities also come with the alignment that makes those dimensions of the anointing function freely. Transference of possibilities. See, the thing with the anointing is, if it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. If you are not sure, it is not there. It's like a woman who is pregnant. For a while, she may doubt if she's pregnant or not. But the time comes, it becomes very clear, very obvious. Regardless of where your request falls in this, I want you to know that the God of heaven who has gathered us tonight will visit you and give you testimonies. It's going to be a very quick walk tonight. The Lord is going to be healing the sick. The Lord is going to be setting the captives free. And like I told us last week, it is also an anointing service. And I don't, I don't do anointing services carelessly, but there are instructions that God gave me. The anointing oil that will be used tonight, the Lord asked me, it's been with me since uh, I think yesterday. I prayed with it all through until um, it was only this morning while I was coming that I carried it and brought it. There is a heavy grace. Oil does not anoint. The oil has to be anointed itself by a, a vessel who is anointed. Nothing is anointed on its own. It has to be anointed to become a platform. Are we together now? Tonight, what is your responsibility? Be convicted. Be persuaded that God is able. All that has happened before now, the prayers, the testimonies, and all of that is to build your faith. Some of you are coming here for the first time. You've heard about the miracles. Many of you have a cynical attitude of doubting men of God. Everybody you see walking in unusual dimensions of the anointing. We have joined naysayers around town to think everybody is fake. Everybody is a devil. Everybody is using charm. You know, I humorously said it last week. Uh, even if you use charm, the condition to carry the kind of power you see, even through a charm, is a condition that you have to think twice. People just say it as if you just collect a charm and put it in your pocket. No, sir. God gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are people. He anointed people by his predetermined counsel so that they can be platforms to be able to communicate his possibilities to people. I'm honored every time I have the opportunity to minister. There are people streaming from all over the world with different issues. Several nations, at least 47 or so nations of the world, if I'm not mistaken, connecting. And God cannot be joking. He's not playing games with us. Are we together? Everybody say, I believe. Say, Lord, tonight, I believe you. I know you are able and I trust you to step in in the name of Jesus it will be for you like day and night just all of a sudden you will find out that that door that has been closed maybe forever listen it doesn't take time time is not in the equation I've taught you this time is never in the equation the anointing of the spirit is not a suggestion the anointing of the spirit is God's possibility at work in men that causes men to manifest results they were not born with. Are we together now? We are talking about a dimension that is superior to any intelligence of men. This is not some kind of superior science. This is not superior spiritism. We are talking of God showing up in the scene, standing face to face with a man's barrier. Hallelujah. I want you to be angry tonight and insist. Thank you. And say, Lord, that door must be open. I was so touched and blessed during the prayer session. Have you experienced the reality of triumph? I mean, there are people here who, whose testimonies have been tearsome. Tonight, you can activate something that will make your 
six to eight hours spent here to be worth the while that you get up in the morning and within three days one door opens another door opens another dimension of encounter all of a sudden hunger all of a sudden you step back to your church and fire on the altar i mean just by stepping and people are rising up from wheelchairs and miracles signs and wonders you bless people you shake someone's hand and all through that day a door opens you introduce something i believe it i believe it the lord wants to turn you to literally be supernatural supernatural not just in this blind talk of supernatural that does not produce results literally that your life becomes a testament that they would look at you like they did Paul and Barnabas and they call them Zeus and Hermes, Greek gods because they, they discerned that this level of result cannot happen with men. Listen, believe it. Believe it, brothers and sisters. Yokes are breakable. Causes are destroyable. Limitations are breakable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sicknesses are healable anointings are impartable there is nothing that you desire don't make it look as though god is mising his power no he is able to stretch his hands and do mighty things but you must believe tonight we love ourselves but everybody is going to have to stand and contend and say lord i have seen a dimension of your grace but i must step into it lord i have seen a dimension of breakthrough and favor but it's not yet a reality in my life. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be you over. You have the victors around. Hold on. You overcome. You know why I started singing that song? I saw a crown. That's why I started singing it. Listen, you see, the way the Spirit of God works is that He reveals the dimension of God that He wants to make manifest in the midst of the people. Are we together now? That's why I raised that song. You need to learn how to partner with the supernatural. He shows you like a luring. This is a dimension. It's up to you to respond. Yeah, Lord, we receive. The spirit and the bride telling the word to come. The word has revealed his intention. So the spirit communicates to the bride. And the bride in partnership with the spirit says, Come, come, Lord Jesus. Come, miracles. Come, breakthroughs. Come, deliverances come open doors come speed come speed loose chains loose bands god is a mighty god do not allow your situations diminish the power of god it doesn't take time the level of grace it takes to produce your results is available mm. it's available I've taught you that there are three dimensions for reception in the spirit. Number one is through encounters. When you have an encounter, something is deposited into you. Number two, by obedience to principles. There is a dimension of God's power that is deposited in principles. Whether a believer or a non-believer, whoever activates those principles, that dimension of his power is released immediately. Like the power of seed time and harvest is not for Christians. A dimension of God's power was encapsulated in that principle. But the third dimension of reception is alignment through a man's covenant with God. Men have covenant with God. Not old and new. Their dealings with God have brought them to a point where God has vowed a vow on their behalf and you can stand upon the platform of their dealings with God and receive realities that your faith level cannot afford. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victors around. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. 
Let me tell you something that happened yesterday. I didn't plan to share it, but, but something happened. I was sleeping and I had a dream. I thought it was a dream yesterday now. While I was sleeping, I had a dream. And then because I had kept the jar of oil and I opened the cover and then I had a dream. Now, you know, I don't share so much of my encounters because there are all kinds of cynical people. And I had the, a dream and then the Lord was telling me, you know, I should how I'm going to pray on the oil that later on we used to minister to you and then something strange happened I just opened my eyes and there was an angel standing at the door my door now now those those experiences are not strange to me you know but this was very unique he stood there and I looked and oil started coming out of my hand and the Lord says I should put my hand on this jar this jar and I tell you I was surprised it would almost be maybe the quarter the size of a cup i just put my hand there and i was just praying in the spirit that was the instruction that god gave me gave me that instruction that's why i told you oil does not anoint there is an encounter there is an encounter are we together now there is an encounter and when it began to happen i was i was i was well i wasn't surprised but then when everything was done the angel never even said anything just at my door just stood there and was watching and when it was time i noticed of course my hands were still wet but it didn't seem to be flowing and that was it whether he went through the door went up i don't even know how he left and that was the end of it right from the time you know my boys that come to work for me i started sensing that there were going to be visitations of the spirit and i was hurrying up to dismiss them as soon as they left i just locked the door and i sat down and boom my room was full of god's presence and all of that and, and i i when i sat down my eyes were open and all of a sudden i saw gates gates opening like gates very strange gates opening but then I knew that God by that vision was telling me what among other things would happen in the meeting but most importantly what the anointing would do listen ladies and gentlemen the Lord will bring breakthroughs in your life today that will surprise you you believe that rise up on your feet I want you to lift up your voice and pray one minute and say, Father, I'm set for your visitation. My faith is alive and I believe you. Lift your voice and pray. My faith is alive. I believe you. Jabrandos katapracatalados. Encreto katalabrande secate pracatalabadash. Jabrete katepros kodo brandi gedibalash. Jabrandes kariada balada balada bosh. Lord, we receive. We receive. Hallelujah. We are going to be very fast. Tonight is a vigil. I know that, in fact, you can't believe how far time has gone. But I trust God for grace tonight. I want to see how God will grant me grace. And I'll be able to come out to all the overflows all the overflows one two three by the grace of god and he will grant us grace in the name of jesus christ 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 please bring the three people now that the power of god comes i'm seeing an angel walking and touching three people in here all inside here now will you open up the gate yeah. open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Open up the gate. Open up the door. 
Lift your hands. I'm going to pray for breakthrough now. Such a strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. There are people here who have been tied. It's time to release that grace for breakthrough. And I want you to bring them out. Please don't stop playing. Please, guys. You know this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. Right now at the count of three. Let that breakthrough anointing right now begin to touch and change the lives of people. One, two, three. Take that breakthrough now. Take that breakthrough now. Bring them out. Shapatakata. Step into that dimension. Shake it, take it, take it, folks. Right at the back. I see the angels of the Lord bringing people into strange levels of breakthrough. Breakthrough. Shapatos kelataria. Mente kotos shotos. E prekete kaya. No limitation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Breakthroughs. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Breakthroughs. Shapos katalatosia. Never be the same. Never be the same. Lift your hands. I see a key hanging in the realm of the spirit. This is access. There are men right now. You are entering into dimensions of possibilities. your hands at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus this is a baptism keys that's what I'm seeing I'm seeing a bunch of keys Lord Jesus for your glory let the closed door open at the count of three one two three the name that is above all names access in the realm of the spirit Shapato sote lekata I command access right now by the power of the Holy Ghost access to dimensions access to levels access to possibilities close doors opening the Lord showed me gates and I decree those gates are opening, 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 opening in the name of Jesus. Those gates are opening. No power stands against you tonight. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare the opening of strange gates, the opening of strange gates. hallelujah hallelujah we are going to do a quick walk please clear this way for me there are two angels that stand before me now my left and my right and the Lord is asking me to pass around and come I will do that very quickly as I do that the Lord is going to be breaking chains and taking away limitations in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus miracles 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost supernatural miracles take them out in the name of jesus miracles in the name of jesus miracles 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost miracles in the name of jesus supernatural miracles i release you now i release you now i release you now I release you now. Step into anointings. Step into graces. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the spirit of the living God. There are chains I'm seeing on people's hands. Chains, 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 chains. Break it now. Chains, break it now. 
chains breaking now. Get ready, this road. I see chains, 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 chains. Let it break now. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Let it break now, now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it break now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles, chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking in the name of Jesus. Chains breaking. Chains breaking. Chains breaking. Chains breaking. 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 Shadow Sotosh Kalai. Rakataka. Let it break now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands here. I stretch my hands right now. Every chain in the name of Jesus. This is a miracle service. I command that the chains are broken. Broken, broken, broken. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus. Broken, you can't stand it. That chain breaks now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 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 I'm seeing the hand of the Lord. A wind of His Spirit coming here. Lord, what is happening here in the name of Jesus? Shebas kotos kaba. Embreke to shetele keta. Brata soto shopres keya. Ambrata ya. I'm seeing someone being taken out of a pit. Out of a pit. Out of a pit. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, out of a pit, I proclaim it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I decree and declare, I decree and declare, captivity ended in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a ring in someone's finger. That demonic ring leaves now. That demonic ring lives now. I see it by the spirit. That demonic ring lives now. I curse it by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I see rings, rings. I curse it by the God of heaven. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Ataparatoshi. Ente karato kotoba. labaya. Can I go out? Those outside, I want you to get ready. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands here. This media place, in the name of Jesus. Those here, I want you to lift your hands. No matter where you are, no matter where you are, I want you to believe. As soon as I pass here, no matter what the issue is, the hand of God is about to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, let there be miracles. Now, I pass these roads. Let there be miracles. Every strange spirit, now, be gone, be gone, be gone now. In the name of Jesus, be gone now. Every strange spirit, the Lord Jesus is in this place. The Lord Jesus is in this place. I stretch my hands now. Over, 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 over. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Over now. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Stand up. Stand up. In the name of Jesus. Hold the baby. Now, out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil. Madame, look at me. The Lord is bringing you breakthrough now. I'm seeing you crying and the Lord is saying in your tears. I'm coming to you. I know you are far, but I will come to you. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus. The anointing is touching some people here. I'm still like chains broken. Chains broken. Let it break right now. In the name of Jesus. Out of him. There's else in this young man. Be God now in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Out. Now. Out now. Out now. Out now. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. The Lord is saying I should tell you that your sins are over. Over. In the name of Jesus. Over. Now. In the name of Jesus. Say, no matter where you are, no matter how far, I want you to connect by faith. Look at me. Delay over your family ends now. Ends now in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit in this. Now. In the name of Jesus. There's someone here, I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing. There's someone here God wants to now declare. Where is that person? I cause that spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me come to this tent overflow now. Lift your hands, all of you. Lift your hands, all of you. Lift your hands. Now, listen. The Lord is giving me an instruction. All of you are, I don't know what overflow is this, four now, three, overflow, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus, something is going to happen right to the back, I'm seeing fire, one, two, three, now, 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 cause those spirits, I release breakthroughs now, in this overflow, in the name of Jesus, to the back, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, I'm seeing several of you inside pit. Now, now, come now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Ezekiel? Ezekiel. I'm hearing a name, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Hold on, be careful. Please be careful. Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel. There is something. God is touching you. The first four rows inside. Inside the main building. First four rows. There's someone right now. The power of God is touching. First four rows inside. Lord, thank you. Let, let that person be touched now. Now, first four rows inside. God is bringing deliverance. Where is Ezekiel? Who is Ebo? You are the Ebo. Come. Where are you from? Huh? Okay. Anambra State. I want to pray for you. You believe that the Lord is going to... I see a lot of witchcraft in your family. And the Lord wants to set you free. Please, those of you outside... I Don't, don't think because you are outside came out to show you that God is serious about your case. Don't think because you are standing, it means you are missing. No. Wherever you are, God can locate you. Are we together now? Salome. Salome. Who is Salome? Someone outside here. Salome. I'm standing close to you. Salome, come. Stand here. In the name of Jesus. I set you free and I set your family free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. It's two guys, lift your hands. Two of you. An anointing is coming on two of you now. Lift your hands. These two gentlemen pray. Father, let them take off that anointing now. Drink of that grace. Drink of that fire. Step into a new dimension now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are Salome. In the name of Jesus. Zonkua. Who is from Zonkua here? Zonkua or something. I'm hearing the Lord is asking me. We have a lot to do. We are going to be very fast because we'll soon pray for the sick now. So, Kua. Hallelujah. Please, don't, don't make this place rowdy. Where are you from? Hold on. Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Are you sisters? You are sisters. There is a spirit of death in your family. Come. What, why are you crying? It's well. Things are not going. Everything is scattered. Okay, look at me, look at me. Two of you shout Jesus as loud as you can. One to go. 
that's the end of it lord i set them free help them under the anointing please there is somebody the spirit of the lord is ministering to me i don't know what god is people outside there is somebody around here want to prophesy to the person bring the person that's the person in the name of jesus christ i'm i'm seeing a snake god my god i'm seeing a not not this person i'm seeing a snake and the lord is saying even the lawful captives that's what the spirit of god is ministering to me please lift your hands those of you here someone has got to be free and Lord, that person right now i pray in the name of jesus let the hand of god come upon that person right now that person has to be free has to has to be free in the name of jesus in the name of jesus here it is is coming now i see like light coming on someone right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit i set you free i'm ministering to people out ah is there a name like that kauna is it kauna or kauna please to be fast kauna who is that I'm, I'm going to this overflow now kauna is there someone like that please i want you to open your mouth and say lord i receive the breakthrough you are bringing lift your voice and begin to speak it i receive it i receive it oh god come what do you do huh where do you do business why i want to pray for you because i'm seeing god empowering you in business do you have an elder sister i've seen a lady this is a lady looking just like you i'm going to pray for you in the name of jesus i took out time because of the massive deliverance that will happen here now this very room i'm walking here please hear me there are mothers who what is going to happen to your children is going to come from your standing here now so please release your faith i want to pray i want to pray for you it ends it's over now in the name of jesus it's over by the power of the holy spirit I will walk it to the front and then I will come down. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to start from the front there. Please just allow me to do my thing. Let's just do it very fast because we're going to pray for the sick. All these people lying shortly. I'm going to ask all of you to sit down. There's anybody on a wheelchair or on a your foot, stand up right now. When I ask you to stand you will stand up and took away whatever you came with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Um, my God. I'm going to pass and there is nothing special about me. It's just a communication, a channel for the Lord to touch you. Come. Um, the man. What is it you are holding? The Lord is saying, what are you looking for? You are looking for a job. Huh? And the Lord is saying, I should release a job to your life. You believe that? Receive your job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Father, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will blow upon this place. As I pass this place, let no yoke, let no chain stand. In the name of Jesus. Them now, in the name of Jesus, I bring you life by the power of the Spirit, the life of the life of God by the power of the Spirit. Lease life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every darkness, leaves, every trace of darkness leaves, 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 leaves now, leaves now 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 leaves now in the name of jesus christ every trace of darkness must go now in the name of jesus christ it must go now by the power of the holy ghost it must go now it must go now someone with pile is being healed now 
somewhere here someone with pile is being healed now someone with pile you're going to feel like fire going through your body we'll pray for the sick shortly be healed now fire is on your head be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a yoke of delay here this row somebody somebody has to be free now in the name of Jesus Christ let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost let that delay be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost it's to a new level in the name of Jesus the Lord is renewing 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 I hear renewal in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm standing in this row because the angel of the Lord is standing here and he wants to touch somebody right now in the name of Jesus let it be over let it be over by the power of the Holy Ghost right now please help them my God my sister you are praying and I'm hearing your prayer come you are telling the Lord to visit you I'm hearing your prayers in my ears and the Lord is saying I should that he should give you a visitation who is this this is your husband yes sir where is he he's in Berlin I want to pray for you I don't like what I see right the Lord is going to set them free because I've seen everything is tied down for this family nothing is working yes sir is that true the Lord is going to step in now Edo State Edo State I'm from Edo State what the Spirit of God is showing me in the name of Jesus Christ I'm pray for you this father let there be a miracle right now I end it now in the name of Jesus Christ I end it right now in the name of Jesus Christ my God now see this thing the Lord shows me all the time please everybody lift your hands inside or outside lift your hands now I'm seeing a map I don't know why God always shows me this I'm seeing a map and the spirit of the Lord through that map is taking me to Benway State now everyone from Benway State get ready the anointing of God comes upon you now Benway State Benway State the Lord is setting people free. Benway State, right now. Shekratos, Kalatos, inside and outside. Benway State. Benway State, inside, outside. Benway State. I see breakthroughs coming. Benway State, anointings. Mata Lakota is a sign and a word that the Lord does where He locates people by states. Locates people by states. I'm praying now. If you're in Benway State, this unction is on you. The work is on you inside. My God, I'm seeing people inside, inside the main auditorium. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. I'm hearing or to go or to go breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs, strange breakthroughs or to go. Shakato sekete, egreto shalabariata, embrakato shataya la kosata. Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there are miracles. In the name of Jesus, there are breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jacob, 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 your. I'm standing close to you and your name is Jacob lift your hands it's over now forever over in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the there's somebody praying in this room the power of God is coming on him now someone is praying a prayer in the name of Jesus you are stepping into a level the spirit of wisdom is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ is it Asabe? Asabe? I'm hearing the name Asabe. Quickly, I want to see how God will grant us grace. This evening, there are so many sick people we have to pray for. Asabe. Is it Asabe? I'm hearing Asabe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. Look at my eyes. My eyes. Look at my eyes. Break every chain. 
break every chain. Visit her family, oh God, once and for all. Let this be the season. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is from Enugu State? Enugu State. Hold on, hold on. Please don't fight yourselves. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Enugu. Enugu State. I'm going to pray for you. Choma. What? Choma. 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 I'm hearing a name, Choma. We're going to pray. Choma. You are inside. The Choma at the main auditorium. Choma, where are you? Give Jesus praise. I'm going to pray for you. Your name is Choma. What's your name? Your name is Choma. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is set family free right now because this is one of your prayer requests. I'm looking at your prayer request in a vision. What did you say the Lord should? I'm seeing your prayer request on top of you and I'm seeing that you're writing that God should bring breakthrough for your family. He will. He will. He will. We're talking about the spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be over. My brother, stand up. Look at me. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You love Jesus? I'm seeing your legs tied and I'm seeing snake of your legs down to your head. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is where this will start from. Be free now. Out! In the name of Jesus, help him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where did you come from, my dear? You are from Isuka. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. Let it be over now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing that map again. The Lord shows me Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna now. The power of God is looking to Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna, inside and outside. You're from Southern Kaduna. I'm seeing the map of Kaduna State. And the Lord is touching people from that state right now. There are several people inside, ushers, different people. The Lord is touching people. Southern Kaduna, miracles, miracles. I'm seeing like a, a, the cover. The cover of a well being opened in the name of Jesus. Let it be by the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. By the Spirit of the Living God. Let it end now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it end. Captivity must end. In the name of Jesus Christ, captivity must end now. Captivity must end. Captivity must end. Shada sete karotash. Embrekete shala pradosa subriada. Shala prende keto prasara banana ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing Italy. Italy, a country, Italy. Who has a relative in Italy? You come. There is power. Please quickly. Who do you have in Italy? My elder sister. Where is she? She's in Italy. Have you heard from her? No, it has been long. There's a, there's a problem. I'm seeing that lady is in a serious problem. She needs a miracle. Did we discuss this with you? Yes, yeah, she discussed it with my mom. I'm saying, did I discuss it with you? No, sir. She's in Italy. There is a serious problem. Huh? I'm seeing deportation. We have to pray for her. There is a serious issue. Not only deportation, but she's about to get into trouble. The Lord brings this thing so that he will set you free. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's what I was waiting for. In Jesus' name. There's somebody in front among the people lying down there. Um, I'm seeing the Lord touching their family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. Those of you coming for the first time, this is what happens in the miracle service. Is is These are not just miracles. They are called signs and wonders. They are operations of the Spirit. You can see me call a state and everybody on that, that state is under the influence of the Spirit. It's not some magic. These are operations. These are superior dimensions of the operation of the Spirit of the living God. I want to pray for the lady in Italy. 
the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now. A miracle right now. Something is leaving you, even you who is standing. This has caused delay in your life. The Lord is about to give you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural speed. The Lord ends captivity in your life. Let it end now. Captivity is ending by the Spirit and the power of God. Captivity is ending. Hallelujah. There is somebody inside here. I'm seeing a vision. You are a, you are a professional footballer. Come out. Something has tied you down. It's time for you to move up. Who is that? You are a footballer. That's why you came here. Who is that? Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Lord Jesus, we honor you. Leave her. I want to pray for her. Something is happening. That's why I'm standing. Jesus, let this oppression over her family end. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same thing happening to her is happening to someone right at the back. In the name of Jesus. You play football? Oh, this is your brother. From where? Somebody cheated you. We have to pray for you. Huh? Where do you want to travel to? Huh? Europe. But you know that God has to take you to a clean way. Huh? If you want to smuggle your way and go to Europe, the devil would go and hijack your life and destroy you and they will throw you back. Do you understand? Because I see God lifting you in this career. The Lord is taking you very, very far. You believe that? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I bring him into this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be for you. You see, prophecy does not just reveal, prophecy creates. We make things that have no business happening to happen. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the road is clear for you now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Seven months pregnant. There's a woman I need to pray for. Seven months pregnant. Seven months pregnant. Come. You are pregnant. How many months? Seven months. The Lord is telling me to take away CS. Hold my hands. Jesus. When are you due? Next month. September. You are due September. When? Do you know? You don't know. Anything from September 19th, get ready. Huh? In the name of Jesus, I hold you and I declare, I stop CS now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a problem with this baby, as I'm seeing. Is that true? Yes. I told you. Yes. This baby is not lying correctly and it's affecting you. If we don't pray, something will happen and you give birth to a dead baby. We correct it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I bring the life of Christ to you. In the name of Jesus, you will give back normally by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick now, but uh, who is this? You are pregnant. How many months? Seven months. Yes, sir. Have you gone to the hospital? Where is your husband? He's at home, sir. Husbands, husbands. They send their wives and stay back at home. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Put your hand in your stomach. God is going to give you a dream about the name of this child. Receive grace to name the child exactly what you see. Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be. In the name of Jesus, let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it be by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We'll soon pray for the sick, but I want to do something. 
Look at me. This lady. Out of her now. I release the life of Jesus Christ and I curse the works of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing fire. It's like it's looking for someone in this room. This is something that has to do with someone's family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just this role. Because I'm seeing the Lord is revealing to me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. The power of God will come upon whoever that person is. And that will end it right now. End it right now. Family. God is touching the families. In the name of Jesus. It is not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit of God. It's not by power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me someone's prayer request. Prayer point number one. Let my sister have a child. Who is that? Prayer point number one. You are wearing red. Break every chain. Break every chain. I hope you are not telling lies. What was your first prayer request? Let my sister and my brother have a baby. Where are they? They are in their various places. Your sister, how long has she been married? Going to three years. Did she have a child before? No, but my brother has. Did she take in before? No. This person is wearing red. I will pray for you, but I'm seeing somebody wearing red. This is the person in the vision the Lord is showing me. Who is that? This is the person I saw, but I will pray with you. Listen, I want you to believe that no barren person, there is no need to go back without a child. It's, it's, there is not necessary. Hold on, I'm not just praying for barren people at random, but just let them come since they're here. We'll pray for people. We're about to pray for people now. We'll take our time to minister. The anointing is there. You see that even the vigils, sometimes you close your eyes and it's already morning. Praise the Lord. My friend, you love Jesus? Kai, please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. I'm seeing you standing and I want to pray. I know I always pray, but this guy smokes, uh, um, what they call that thing. But I know people smoke all kinds of things, but this guy, your own is acute. You are here, but truthfully speaking, you cannot help. You can take as much of that thing till it destroys you. I'm even seeing that you have some. I don't know whether it's at home. Please, who is that? Don't be embarrassed. The Lord wants to set you free. If you sit down, that's your, that's, that's for you. Whether you are inside, outside, make your way. Don't be ashamed. Just come out here. I want to pray for you now. My dear, I want you to call. Where are they? Who, who are you standing in for? Ladi Abuti. Huh? Ladi Abuti. You? No, You're the, my sister. Your sister. Okay, I want to pray. The person I'm talking about, please summon the courage to stand here. I want to pray for you. I want you to call her after this meeting and tell her to get ready. God is going to give her a baby boy. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you because your power is available to set the captives free. I decree and declare. Let it be right now. Establish it in Jesus' name. It's over now. You are the one who came. Come. We have to pray. Your brother, you said they are barren. I'm not seeing your brother barren. He has two children. How many two children? Hold on, let me talk to you. How many children? The first one was a miscarriage. Miscarriage? How many children are there now? The second one died like two weeks after. I'm seeing two children that is not a miscarriage. They were born, but they died. Two, two children. Now it's, there's no child at all. The one they had died like weeks or so. How many weeks? Two weeks, Two weeks after birth. One and one day. And he just died. We have to pray. You understand? You, you're standing in for them and you believe God will help them. We have to pray. As you're praying for them, it will never be part of your life. You have no business with that thing. Somebody needs to come out. This wee wee thing. Who is the person? Let's celebrate him. Don't, don't feel bad. 
Hallelujah. He's your friend. He's your brother. He smokes this thing. He smokes a... Uh, huh? Do you love Jesus? You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I have to pray for him. My friend, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I have to pray for him. You see, the same thing, the anointing, when you smoke this thing and when you are under the influence of the anointing, it's exactly what happens when you smoke these leaves, you see. Those leaves. There is a lady. Come and join him. I'm seeing a lady. Don't be embarrassed. Please. Jesus is setting you free. There is a lady. You can't help yourself. This is not the issue of being good or bad. Please run boldly and come. If you waste our time, you just sit where you are. One lady. There is a lady. This thing has destroyed. It's not like you like it, but you can't help it. It comes upon you like an anointing and you have to come. My dear, let's pray. We have to pray for the sick now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I agree with you. I terminate the yoke of barrenness right now. Sister and brother, in the name of Jesus, they take in now. You're here for the same reason? You're here for the same reason? In the name of Jesus. You're standing for yourself? Your sister. If I ask for people who have who want children, except you are standing for somebody, if you are standing for yourself, make sure you, are, you have a husband or a wife. Praise God. We, we are Bible believers, but we are not stupid people. Make sure you are married officially. Because I know that there are people who just live together. Um, you, don't, you don't love God and then we have to stay. Of course, God is merciful. The Spirit of God is not letting me rest over the lady that we are going to pray for. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. We are a family. Nobody looks down and embarrasses. There's no condemnation here whatsoever. We are here to help. We are here to show you the mercies of God. Hold my hands, my dear. This is a lady. Ah, no, this is not how. The person I'm talking about is here in this venue. You are here. You are not asleep. You are awake. You are hearing what I'm saying. This lady is. You understand? Barrenness. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch them. In the name of Jesus, touch them. Hold on. Don't worry. We are going to pray for the sick. Who is this? Why are you here, madam? Please just be patient. Why is she here? If it's not the case I mentioned, um, can I pray for you, my friend? You are the one who brought him. Where is he from? He's, he's from, he's from Benue State, sir. Eh? He's from Benue State. He's from Benue See how the guy is yes, staring sir. at me? If he has his way, he can eat and swallow me as if it's easy. Between you and me, it's a long distance. It's not what you are saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very long distance stretch your hands and let's pray for this guy he's a nice person this this is what we we and co can do let's pray let's pray my friend don't worry we are praying for you eh? it's not just you stretch your hands saints of god you are anointed let's pray for him lord help this gentleman please i still insist this lady if god grants you grace in the name of jesus christ i pray for you we love you and in the name of jesus we pray for you sincerely by the compassion of the Christ, we pray for you that the power of this, this substance abuse is broken in your life. In the name of Jesus. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. 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 I have to talk to that person quickly and then... We will pray for the sick. You can't imagine how the time is gone. We are still going to anoint. It's already morning. Rebecca. Is there anyone? Huh? My sister. Your sister. I'll pray for you, but what's your name? What's Rebecca. your name? Rebecca. My dear. Come. Who is this? Rebecca. The lady that smokes this thing. This thing has depressed this lady and changed her. That's why I want to pray for you. What's your name? Rukaya. 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 Come. I love you. Where? Eh? 
Come, you're a darling. We're not, we're not here to make you feel bad at all. Listen, let me tell you something. Huh? One of the keys to walking in the anointing is love. You don't love people, you will never walk in authentic power. When God reveals to you things about people's lives, it's not because you are better than them. Are we together now? The goal of this revelation is to extend the hand of God's love. This is a wonderful lady. You can see very lovely, beautiful lady that the devil wants to destroy. So every time words come like this or when we pray for people, this is a family of faith where everybody is a product of God's mercy and grace. Are we together, darling? I, I know that you may not like some of them. It may not even be bad friends. They just got into all of these things. And let me tell you, maturity does not deliver people from spirits you can be growing older and still remain you believe the lord jesus will help you hmm? Thank you. you've tried to stop this thing abby yes and you will try and it won't work yes problems keep coming up that i just can't stop what do you take i smoke i take drugs i drink you drink yes Please stretch your hands over this lady. Pray as if you are praying for your own daughter. Pray as if you are praying for your own child. Lord, have mercy on this dear lady. We refuse to leave her to the devil. We love her. Pray, some of you are looking at me. Pray with all your heart. Lord, help this lady. Usually people take these things as a result of depression, all kinds of challenges their lack of understanding the word of God, their lack of encounter with the word of God is what produces this kind of devilish effect. Hallelujah. Look at me, my dear. You are my friend, eh? Don't cry. You are my friend from today. God will help you, eh? Say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, eh? Pastor Alpha, please, eh? You will follow this lady. Just help her to stand strong. Some of these ladies... It's just a combination of loneliness and then they meet all kinds of bad people. By the way, when, when it's time to do the final prayer, we're going to pray against these bad people around our community whose lives is to frustrate and destroy people. There are many ladies here you want to love God and, and live for Him. But there are all these boys around that make it look like serving God is a waste of time. And they keep distracting you and before you know it in the name of love in the name of relationship and and in the name of wanting to marry you they derail you from the path of god anybody who must make you leave god to marry you is not an irresponsible person that prayer has already been answered the answer is no leave the person quickly don't say i'm waiting on god god is not a fool are we together so go and meet pastor alpha he will help you and eh? he will collect your details and your Rebecca, all of you, three of you, I cannot even remember why I asked you to come out, but let me pray for you. You are standing in for your sister. You love Jesus. Friends, eh? You love Jesus, but be careful so that, um, you know, your company matters as much as your work with God. The Lord will help you. Huh? In Jesus' name, over now in your life. Hold my hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is setting her free. I'm seeing something leaving her. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let her be free from it. That devil of darkness lets you go. Rebecca, the Lord is bringing you liberty in the name of Jesus. It's over now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, this favor is lifted from your life forever. In Jesus' name, two of you are Rebecca. Your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, I agree with you. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you. Now, what's that? Is song? Gashina, Gamuna, Sir King Aljana. Gashina, Gashina, Gamuna, Sirkin Al Janna, Yana, Gashina, Gamuna, Yana, 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 Yana,
the Lord. I want to pray on this now. You can imagine it's to five. Stretch your hands here. Let's pray. God is a miracle worker. The testimonies here is a revelation that God gave us and an instruction. And my God, what a joy to life. Stretch your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Jabratos Kalabrendegeva Sarabakuriata Katash. Stretch your hands in the name of Jesus. Mandala Kapratos Katavridish Kalabraniakata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Father, we agree. We agree for miracles. We agree for sins. We agree for wonders. Mante Kalas Kotambriatatos Bredo go shobra dis kalabrata kata faradash le kata prando susi priata e kata japrata she pregade bosh pray we receive miracles we receive signs we receive wonders in the name of Jesus Lord release miracles to families release signs wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Let impossible situations come under the influence of your spirit. Makotopa shabradaka sode barato sesiana kosh agradaka barato kosho brendi gede balato siada kata shabraka barako to sobri gedia rabadaka dabalada kosho sobri adabalada bosh. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we decree and declare. Agree with me. Right now, let every impossible situation turn into a miracle right now. Lord, this is a representation of the cries and the desires of your people. Scattered around this place and many across the nations of the world. Lord, we agree that you are a miracle worker and we decree and declare that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. We decree that these requests are turned into testimonies in the name of Jesus. Visit the barren, heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, wipe the tears of your people by the power of your word. Let there be miracles. We release miracles, 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 miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're getting to the last phase. We're going to pray on this. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about this oil you're seeing. It's, it's truly an oil of wonder. I spent uh, the night praying. No oil in itself is anointed. Please be careful. Don't hurt her. Don't. Ah, uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they are wondering what to do with her my dear be comfortable okay this your case is a very straightforward demonic case your bones are fine everything is fine you've taken this just relax um if she doesn't feel the strength to stand on force her or you can just guide her who brought her how did she come you carried her can you carry her are you that strong this is night vigilo okay take her gradually you try to walk to where well, while they are carrying you please when you keep her exercise there's no reason oh dear there's no reason why this lady should go back crippled honestly speaking it's not that her bones are broken just all these demonic things so i was talking about this oil um there is a ritual when people begin to idolize things oil water handkerchiefs aprons um, um stickers banners they lose the life in it religion is a very terrible thing it's important you do things according to the word of god and as directed by the holy spirit 
last week was an anointing service for favor and um, we're going to name this one now and then we'll pour it and then we'll have um, our anoint these guys and then we'll do it very quickly whilst we're doing that please the moment you come touch the anointing oil on your head please and please we'll make it very fast you can see that it's already five o'clock it's almost as if um, it was not a vigil <laughs> praise god father we give you all the praise i lift up this jar of oil and in the name of jesus christ we call it an oil of breakthrough yeah. say amen we decree and declare yeah. let this oil be a symbol of supernatural breakthrough the supernatural oil that came from my hands that was added to this i pray that the mystery of breakthrough that this represents as it comes upon you let there be strange signs and wonders in the name of jesus let this provoke angelic visitations in the name of jesus christ and let this cause the holy spirit to move in your life in a mighty way the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and the reason why he's upon me is because I was anointed in the name of Jesus may the anointing attract dimensions of the operations of the Spirit in the name of Jesus we dedicate this I command this oil to lose its earthly significance and to take on the significance of a mystery in the realm of the Spirit representing breakthrough at the same time let this be an oil of judgment in the name of jesus christ let this be an oil of judgment by the power of the holy spirit god's ability god's ability is working in me hallelujah we have to say it. father in the name of jesus i thank you i'm anointing you so that you will stand and as I lay my hands, I pray that this grace of breakthrough and favor will start from you first. I want you to believe it. This is an oil that will bring supernatural breakthrough in your own life. Supernatural grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace. Anointing of the Holy Ghost in fresh dimensions. In the name of Jesus, that grace, that anointing, that grace, that anointing that grace that anointing in the name of jesus christ okay so you can give it to them father we decree and declare this is an oil of supernatural breakthrough i can always add please quickly station yourselves we're going to be praying all through as soon as as soon as the oil touches you please i want you to begin to pray worship team you give us okay just play the instruments we'll just begin to pray in the spirit everyone praying in the spirit as the oil comes upon you begin to declare speak forth release your faith lord we decree and declare right now let miracles begin let signs and wonders and breakthroughs begin in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus you can stand here okay thank you jesus go ahead as soon as you touch the oil begin to prophesy in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare the word of the lord becomes my testimony the oil is anointed please quickly 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 make sure everyone is anointed make sure everyone is anointed young old Somebody, 